Hello and welcome to the Conscious Entrepreneurs Podcast, a series of inspiring interviews with spiritual leaders and entrepreneurs who have successfully turned their passion into their own business and who are dedicated to living their best possible life while making this world a better place through their work, offerings, and authentic presence. I'm your host, Anna Frolic. I am an intuitive guide and mentor for purpose-driven business owners who are ready to break free from their self-imposed limitations so they can confidently step into their true calling, make more money working less, and embrace the life their soul is craving. I'm so excited you're here with us, and I can't wait to introduce you to today's guest. For more information about this and past episodes, please visit www.anafrolic.com. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conscious Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Anna Frolic, and my guest today is Sarah Marie Thompson, who is a creative lifestyle expert and soul guide as well as the creator of the Wild and Creative Community and the Golden Pineapple Project, which you'll get to hear a little more about later in this episode. As a skilled artist, designer, energy worker, and mentor, Sarah has assisted hundreds of passionate souls in finding their creative gold. She loves to help her clients get clear on what their most aligned journey is so they can build a fun and profitable business out of their passions. She works with her clients every step of the way to identify their gifts, create their big dreams, and heal emotionally as they go. Yay, thank you so much for being here with me today, Sarah. Thank you so much for asking me to be on your podcast. I am super excited to dive into our conversation. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I know I've been wanting to invite you for a while, but today is the day. (laughs) Here we are. Cool. All right. So um, to start with, I'd love to hear a little more about your journey as an entrepreneur and specifically how did you get started in your business? Was this something that you always kind of wanted or did this evolve quite naturally for you on your journey? Yeah, I definitely did not know at a young age that I wanted to do online mentorship. I had no idea, like at all. Um, I was always a very creative person though. So I was always an entrepreneur because I remember having like trying to start my own businesses when I was like three. So I've always had that within me and I've always been creative. And so it was always just kind of like, you know, testing the waters, putting things together to see if they were going to work. And then uh, right out of high school, um, I went into fine arts in college. And after that, um, I basically started my my first career, which was an interior design company. And interior design, I loved it. I loved it so much because I love physical, tangible things, right? I'm not materialistic, but I love physical, tangible objects. And so I did really well at that in parts of it. Um, Looking back now, I can definitely say that I was too much in the masculine for my business back then. And I was not using my intuition properly because I was also attracting people like that were not good clients. Right. So something felt like off. Like I just, I was so confused because I was like, universe, I'm doing what I love, but why are you bringing me these experiences that suck? Right. Like it was very, very confusing. And so I decided to take a little break. Um, But before I decided to take a little break, um, I actually got a call from a girl and she said, hey, I have a bed and breakfast. I'd love for you to come and check it out and see what kind of design stuff that we can do. And I met with her and it was like instant friends. And um, basically, we just started putting together some ideas for her bed and breakfast. Um, About a day and a half or so later, I took my well, my boyfriend at the time, but my husband now, I took him to a spa to get a pedicure. This will all relate soon. (laughs) It's a strange story. I took him to a spa to get a pedicure. And as I was waiting in the waiting room, I looked over beside me and I saw this little book, 365 Days of Affirmations by Louise Hay. And I picked it up and I was like, I'd never even heard of Louise Hay before, right? It was kind of like, this was like back, you know, the third, 12 or so years ago. And, um, 
or maybe sorry about me eight or so years ago and um so I remember looking at it and it was full of art and quotes and that kind of thing and I was like I need to do this like this is exactly what I need to do I'm, I'm good with quotes I love them and I also have a ton of art because I've been painting for years so I was like I'm gonna set to work and like get this book done something similar right not totally copying it but something similar and so I told my friend I had just met um when I met her again and she was like you know what I'm great with words like let's collaborate on this little project so we started meeting coffee shop after coffee shop um month after month and we got basically almost this whole entire book done and the whole idea of the book was that you know it's going to have great um great inspiring images but it was also going to share stories and details of how you can live your best life as a creative person and you can create every moment of every day you don't have to be a painter or a potter or like you know the traditional artist right to be a creator of your own life and um as soon as we were almost ready to publish this, we we're like, do we self-publish? Like um, traditional, what do we do here? We had no idea. Um, I was like, okay, I think we need to hop. I think we need to hop online and create some kind of community here because, like, we have no buddy. Like, who's gonna buy our book? Our parents. So, so I hopped on Facebook and I created um, a, a page called Connection to Creative. And for a couple months, I just pumped inspirational images, stories, pictures, all that kind of stuff onto this page, and. I said to her, I was like, okay, well, when we get to 300 likes, that's when we're going to start getting into like the details of our book. And so, in, but honestly, like we got to a thousand likes, 20,000 likes, 75,000 likes, a hundred thousand likes, 150,000 likes. Like it was like, it blew up like in a matter of a couple months. And that was my first real like introduction to, Hey, you're online. So I didn't know like what the heck was going on. Um, like I said, I knew that I was creative. I knew that I wanted to do some kind of project, but the whole online kind of social media world blew up before our eyes. And, um, so from there we're like, okay, well we need to make a website. We need to like provide them with some kind of other, um, experience. Right. And so I started creating like quizzes and all this kind of stuff for, for people to learn more about themselves. And that's kind of how I got online all, all, like honestly, like it was very organic. And the funny thing is like, even to the, so to this day, my business is called wild and creative. So I rebranded about three or four years ago when my friend decided to, she decided to move away and we just kind of, you know, separated things business wise. And it was kind of my baby anyway, to begin with. So I continued with, with the whole business aspect of things. And that's when I really started getting um, into online mentorship was when I went um, into the whole, like, you know, brand mm -hmm. by myself. And, um, the cool thing is, is that, you know, well, it's not cool, but the interesting thing is that we never did make that book that we started out to make, right? So it's just a really interesting story about how, like, inspired thought leads to another inspired thought, and stepping stones lead to other stepping stones. You have no idea, like, what you're going to end up doing, right? And if I would have said, you know, to myself, about, like, no, I'm here to make a book and nothing else, right, and been really rigid, then, well, I would not be here today. Mm -hmm. So that's the story of how I got online as an online mentor. <laughs> oh, yeah, I really love your story. Sounds like a very magical unfolding of many different steps. And yeah, I, I love those kinds of stories. Um, so what inspired you to take this a step further and actually start mentoring other creative women? Well, like I said, a number of years ago when I decided to rebrand in my own brand, I started getting asked a lot, hey, can you help me with my business? Can you help me, um, you know, explode my social media? Can you help me, you know, create this, this, and this? And it, it took me a little while to really get into the groove of it. I was like, hey, what am I? Am I a creative coach? Am I a creative mentor? Am I, am I an intuitive coach? I had no idea. And it wasn't until I really fully understood my soul's path which that's what I help people do now. So I'll explain a little bit more. But the thing about being creative is that it's a blessing and a curse. We all know that, right? Like we love everything and we want to do everything, but it's hard because we need to focus on something, you know, specific, right? In order to do well. And um, at that time I was like, okay, like what is my focus? Like what is my personal goal? How do I really help people? And the only thing that I really fully understood was that, I have built a lot of businesses, tried a lot of businesses, um, had many businesses at the same time too, and realized that you can't do everything all at once. And so I really feel like the women that I connect with are creative. They love doing a lot of things. 
but they're scared to let go of some of the things because they don't know what to let go of in order for them to do well and, you know, and succeed. So here's the thing. It's like when you really understand what your soul aligned gifts and attributes and, um, skills really, really are, it allows you, like it allowed me to be like, ah, I finally get to let go of these things. And like, I feel guilt free about letting go of all these other things I've been working on. Now this makes sense. Now I can focus on this and this, what have you, right? So the Wild and Creative brand to this day now is really been built on my soul attributes, like what I'm here to do. And that really is, you know, creating experiences for people and also um, creating like creating something for them, whether that be courses, tangible objects, what have you, or creating an experience for them to learn and grow more as a person. Um, but again, it took me a while to get there, right? Because without me finally figuring out what my soul's work was and how to figure that out, I would still be probably pretty lost. But I know there's so many creative people out there that are feeling slightly lost still. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I've definitely been there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I know a lot of creative people too. And uh, yeah, definitely includes myself. Like there's been like so many times in my journey when I felt so lost in all my ideas and like there were so many things I wanted to do. And, and as you mentioned that guilt, like you feel like you want to get everything done at once and, and as soon as possible. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of similar for me when I really learned to let go and just be okay with focusing on one thing at a time and then also trusting the flow. Like if maybe sometimes there is something that wants to come in on the side and that kind of feels aligned, then that's okay too. But um, yeah, I love how you discovered your purpose through this. And um, let me ask you, do you do any work in the Akashic records or do you have like your own way of um, diving into someone's sole purpose? Like how exactly does your process work? Um, so my process does take like a little while. Like I have to ask a lot of questions. Um, I do not do Akashic work. Um, but I've always found that people that have got Akashic work done after working with me have been like, yeah, it was basically what you said. So I've always had a really good, um, accuracy rate, like, but it's really just understanding someone, right? Like understanding their vibe, understanding the way they talk, understanding what lights them up, understanding, um, you know, by asking a lot of questions, you, you really do like, I can really can get a very, very strong sense of what people should be doing. And it's not necessarily what you, what you are doing. It's just how you do the things that you do. And that's really like the roadmap to success. So again, it's interesting because like my soul attributes are, I could say that they're the exact same thing for when I was an interior designer. They haven't changed, but now the work that I'm doing is, has changed, but my soul attributes, like they're still going strong. Mm -hmm. They're still doing the things that they're meant to do. Um, so it's, no, I do not do Akashic records. Um, they interest me very, very much, but I feel like I feel like at this point, like I love, I like them a lot. I like the Akashic records a lot, but I don't love it enough to study it and, and be, you know, get into it like that. And that's something that I've really like come to terms with, especially this year is like, bring it back to basics. Only do the things that you love. If you honestly, that would be the old me. I'm going to be a cash record reader. I'm going to do this. <laughs> that. Like that's so like the old me where I'm like, I love everything. And like, I can't say no to anything, but now it's like, you know what? No, I'm only going to focus on the things that I'm like mega love. Right. Mm, and those are the things that are really most aligned with your soul too. I guess as, a, as creative people, we kind of like having our own methods and our own ways of doing things as well. Yeah. And um, I do a bunch of different like energy healing work and I've, I've studied a bunch of different healing modalities and I've kind of taken all the parts that I love out of the different healing modalities that I love and mix them together and put them into another process of mine and that kind of thing. So again, it's really just about taking those parts and pieces of the things that you really love and using those instead of using everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I love what you said about, you know, the, the physical expression of what you do, you know, that can really change even if you're, you know, you kind of stay aligned with your soul level gifts and, and your purpose. But um, I think that's been so important for me on my journey as well to be okay with that and to see, you know, we all evolve and it's okay to want to change things. And but it doesn't mean that you're um, necessarily losing a part of yourself or um, you're just kind of reinventing yourself. So I, I love how you explain that. 
And um, let me just have a quick look at my questions here. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask you, um, besides <laughs> the focus part, which I know is definitely one of the biggest challenges for a lot of creative people, are there any other typical challenges that you see in a lot of uh, creative entrepreneurs uh, while they're building their businesses or trying to figure out what they want to do or whatever it is? Um, what are some of the typical struggles? Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely focus would be number one. Um, number two probably would be that coming from a very right brain, which most creative entrepreneurs do, um, there really does have to be that balance though. There does, there does have to be the masculine and the feminine energy, right? So I, I will have a lot of ladies like come to me and they will be either super far in the feminine or super far in the masculine energy. And we'll have to like really find the balance there because you need the balance to make a creation and then obviously sell it and receive money for it. Um, but another thing would probably be that, you know, they don't understand the strategy behind how to get somewhere. Right. So that's the work that I do with them. Um, fully understanding what their soul's work is, but then building the whole offering system around, everything. It's like even the wording, like everything that matches their soul, right? Because that's the really important part so that you speak the language of your soul. Um, but I'm going to say probably the, one of the other biggest ones would probably be that they, yeah, they don't understand the strategy. Like they don't have like the left brain of that yet or wrap their head around that. Um, or they are so overwhelmed with where the heck to start. Uh, they don't know. <laughs> like that's, that's, that's very basic, but honestly, that's everybody. Right. So. Mm. Yeah, I totally know what that feels like too. I think a lot of us creative people really tend to resist structure and that's definitely something I've had to kind of reintegrate. Like in the past, I was like you, I was more in my masculine and, and the structure part was really easy, but I was kind of, yeah, not enjoying what I was doing because I was not able to receive the pleasure and, and the joy. And then I kind of went more into the opposite and I had no structure whatsoever. And, and yeah, that did not go very well. So yeah, I love what you said about like, creating that balance. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. It's interesting navigating the waters too, because I mean, mm. you know, there's been parts of businesses that I've done that have been all masculine, right. Where it's just like, you know, go, go, go very kind of like Bob Proctor style, <laughs> you know, everything. And then there's also been times where I've like gone like full feminine where it's just like, well, oh, I'm just going to sit here and let the universe bring me everything I need. And then it's like, well, that didn't really work either. So there has to be like a good balance, right? Of you putting in time and effort of things that you love to do, uh, but also being very open to the idea of receiving um, compensation for your gifts, right? And that's mm -hmm. another thing that creatives have a really hard time with is understanding that they have enough self-worth for their creations to be paid for that, right? Because creating is a very spirit-based thing. Like, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Matthew Fox. He's an author and he says, creativity is where the divine and the human meet. And I really like that quote because it's kind of like exactly what it is, right? It's like when you're creating, like whatever it is, even if you're coloring, you can get into a channeled state, right? And your creations really become just a part of life force energy. And so I know that a lot of creatives, um, especially spiritual creatives, they're like, well, I can't get paid for this, or I can't get paid for doing healing work, or I can't get paid for art, right? It's like, it just came through me. Like I didn't even try. But I mean, again, that's just channeling and tuning into your gifts. Amazing, right? So. Mm. And what are some of your favorite abundance tips for creative entrepreneurs? Do you have any favorite ways to shift those beliefs or to, yeah, really um, embrace or learn to embrace the, yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. I would probably say first and foremost, like just thinking back to my own personal story, I would never have a problem getting paid for anything tangible when it came to intangible things. Like the idea of mentorship, I had a hard, hard time wrapping my head around why would someone pay me for air? Like, I'm not really giving them anything, right? There's not like an exchange of like, here's a thing. And now you're giving me money for it. Like that's our brain can be like, oh, okay, well there was an exchange there. So the whole idea of like energetic exchange definitely does trip up a lot of people. And it tripped up me at the beginning. So I really had to fully understand like what it meant to sell intangible stuff. Um, and I had to kind of wrap my head around it in a way that 
I kind of almost drew out a plan for me to understand what I was doing. Like when I'm doing mentorship, okay, what are they actually getting? What is the result that I can help them achieve? Um, are they getting any physical, tangible paperwork with it? You know what I mean? Like I had to kind of like train my mind into understanding that um, it was worth what I had to offer. And that's another huge thing I think for creatives is the intangible tangible, right? Like everybody is really good at either selling an intangible or a tangible or both. That's great. But that's something that they definitely need to work on. Um, so that's not really a tip or a trick, but it's something to definitely like watch out for if you're having trouble. Um, another thing, another idea I had that really tripped me up at the beginning was that um, you know, why would, why should I make a lot of money or any money at all really when there are people suffering? Cause like I'm super, super sensitive to the injustices of the world, especially animals. So I'm like, well, why should I bring in money? Like there's animal organizations that need help. There's like people starving, like, you know what I mean? So it's like, why should this money to go to me? So I really had to fully like belief system wrap my head around the idea of okay, if the money is not going to me, then it's going to someone else who's probably not going to support those causes. It's probably going to someone else that is not going to do good with that money. I'm just going to assume, right? It could go to whatever, drug dealers, who, who knows? Um, but anyway, so I had to really make it okay for me to accept that money because then it was like, okay, I'm in control of this. Now I can help who I want with this. But another belief system people have around money is that they don't want the responsibility that money brings them. But the thing is, if you don't accept some, a little bit more responsibility, right, then you don't have control over where that money goes. So you really have to, I don't know, it's like kind of grow up a little bit, right? If you want to, to bring more money into your life and no belief system is the same for anybody else, right? Like everybody has so many different belief system patterns and it's just really important to like look at them, especially as they're popping up for you. Um, I had another belief that I've talked about this before, but I've had another belief that, uh, if I was successful, it meant that I had to travel all the time. And being a really like physical person, I love my home and I like to travel too, but I like to be in control of traveling. And my past job, um, which was a corporate job I had for a number of years, I had to travel all the time. So I was so sick of traveling at that point, right? And so I really think that I just kind of created this idea that, yeah, if you are successful, like all the authors and teachers and mentors online, you have to travel all the time. And I was like, no, 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 hold on. One day I was like, if I create my own business, that means I get to create the rules too. So I don't have to travel all the time. Right. But it was interesting that I caught that belief happening because it was one of those ones that's just sneaky in there. And I didn't realize it was there. Right. Until one day it just kind of like popped up and I was like, well, I've got to change that because that's not accurate. That's not mm -hmm. the truth. Right. So. Yeah. That's such a great point. I think that's part of or big part of why a lot of us really started our own businesses right so we can be the creators of our own destiny and we can make our own rules so yeah i love that you mentioned that and yeah i wanted to ask you a little more about your spiritual journey as well i know you do some energy work as well with your clients and you do some intuitive work uh, how did you get started on this journey is this something that was and a part of your life since you were very young or did this open up for you but later in your life um it was interesting so growing up i was always addicted to very magical things so um <laughs> however you want to look at that like i was very intuitive i always did like intuitive painting i understood kind of like a bit of the magic of the universe, like as a child would understand. Um, but however, my family wasn't spiritual on either side. And, but they weren't close. They were like, you know, open-minded, right? But they weren't, I wasn't taught anything specific. And it wasn't until probably honestly, like 10 years ago that I really started understanding like, what is energy? Like we hear about energy, like we've always heard about energy, but now it's kind of like a different take on it, right? It's like, you have this, like, you can create anything with it. <laughs> um, everything is energy, right? Like all these bits and pieces I started putting together. And that's when I really started getting into more of the, the energy healing modalities and that kind of thing. Like I said, I've always been intuitive. Didn't know really back then how to use it properly. Didn't know that, didn't really know that like the, our, our feelings and our, and our body is like kind of the conduit or not the conduit, but like the telltale signs of how, what we should be doing. Right. Like that kind of thing. I didn't make those connections. Um, 
so like I said, about a decade ago, I definitely like really dived in. Then I, I learned a number, maybe five or six different healing modalities, um, just to be very like knowledgeable and, and educated on like what they are and how they work. And the interesting thing that I found with almost all healing modalities is that they always want to get your energy back to neutral, like ground zero neutralized. That's always the idea of them. And so I thought that that was really, really interesting because whether it's like tapping or Ho'oponopono or, um, you know, uh, healing touch or Reiki or what have you, the goal is always to get it to neutral or above. And, um, yeah, so anyway, that was something that I really kind of like started studying about even more because then I started getting into theta healing and all that kind of stuff again, which is all about neutrality. And, um, I don't know. There was something really, really interesting there about it. I kind of took, like, like I said, all my favorite um, parts and pieces from all the different healing modalities I learned, kind of create a system for myself that made sense, that felt good. Because again, energy work isn't just like the ABC of this or like it's, it's, it's intention and it's you creating a system that you believe in. And, um, you know, that's what it's really about. Right. So it's, it's again, like on all of these energy healing modalities, again, belief is a huge piece of the pie. And so, yeah, I mean, I definitely incorporate them into the work that I do now. I do a lot of belief clearing and pattern reprogramming for the women that I work with, which is helpful because a lot of them need, you know, to stop the patterns, right. For them to move forward as their best selves. And, um, yeah, that's really where I've taken it to now. So, uh, I also love to do kind of like intuitive painting or even kind of like energetic paintings where, um, you know, I'll use very specific colors like for color therapy and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, almost have them as kind of like intentional healing tools, but also because I love interior design still, and because I'm a very physical person and I've really dived into kind of like creating your home and life as magical as possible. There's a lot of creative artful things that I do that are kind of connected to healing modalities that I use with physical objects and, um, and kind of like setting programs within the house and just all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's so vast, but like, that's kind of like where I've taken it now. Mm, yeah. Sounds really amazing and fascinating. And I love how you really took all the pieces and created your own modality or your own way of doing things. I think it really makes things a lot more simple too. Um, I've, I mean, I've studied a lot on my own journey and I definitely got a bit overwhelmed at some point because there were so many things that I could do. And, and at some point I felt I needed to do everything and it got really yeah. overwhelming. So yeah, kind of keeping things a bit more simple I feel has helped me personally just be more relaxed and focused too in a lot of ways. And, and um, so a lot of it really is about intention and working your own personal magic too, I think. Seems like you're oh, yeah. really good at that. <laughs> well, I really feel mm -hmm. that everybody's personal magic is mm -hmm. like their creativity. But then with me, like in my business, like the, the reason why I call myself a creative lifestyle expert is because I feel like I've really been able to marry the two creatives and master them, which is the physical, tangible um, side of creativity, right? And then the mental manifesting side of creativity. And they're both equally creative, right? Mm -hmm, so yeah, some yeah. people do one more than the other, of course. But when you can really bring them together, like that's where your magic is for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I always like to say that manifesting and creating is basically the same thing. It's just a different word. Totally. And yeah. I guess maybe we have a more uh, spiritual um, association with one of them and the other feels more physical and, and tangible, but I really think it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and we, when, yeah. When you're creating a craft or mm -hmm. creating a painting even, like you're manifesting that painting to life the way that you want it to look like. But I think that society like really has taken the word manifesting and made it more of like uh, airy kind of a woo woo idea, but really it's just like however you want to manifest this, right? It's like mm -hmm. create it yourself or dream it so hard that it just appears whatever you want to do but like still it's the same idea right so mm. yeah I think when we talk about manifesting a lot of people have this idea that you know you just set an intention and somehow it comes to you which can totally happen but I think the physical action is always part of it too sometimes we're just not so aware of the how or a lot of it is very intuitive and very spontaneous but um yeah I've, I've studied this quite a lot in my own journey like few years back I created a whole course around this and I, I really noticed that all the exercises that I created for my people around um, unblocking their creativity 
those were the exact same things that also helped them manifest more easily and, and just be more in their creative flow and, and be more receptive and, and all those things. So that was really, yeah, really interesting. And uh, yeah, so uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about too today your golden pineapple project i know you're going to be launching this or you're actually launching it again right now and you're going to be um you're starting next week is that right next monday so the golden pineapple project starts again on monday october 29th Mm. and this is 3.0 so it's the third round of it launching and it basically in a nutshell it's an eight-week program all about releasing fear achieving goals and embodying your own personal creative gold. And, you know, it's really unlike any other program, I have to say, because of the way that it's structured and because of the way it pulls women together to work together in a very non, um, you know, aggressive way, (laughs) right? It's just kind of like organically, like women, like really in this in this sisterhood, this golden sisterhood really come together. So, you know, it's all about like releasing the fears that keep you really, really stuck in life that you just don't understand. It's about um, setting and achieving goals for yourself. Um, Cause a lot of women actually don't, don't set goals. Like it's crazy, right? Like it's, it's just another step that I feel is very, very important. Um, another one is owning your story. Like so many people don't understand that their story, no matter what they've been through is inspiring and can help somebody. Right. Um, and it's about embodying your personal creative gold. Like I said, so everybody has some kind of gold within them that they really need to showcase to the world. And that's what this program is going to help you get out of it yourself. And then again, joining like a, a long, like lifelong support group. Like the, the interesting thing about the women that came together, even in the first round of golden pineapple project over a year ago, have stayed in contact. There's been collaborations that have come out of it. Um, mm-hmm. There's people that have raised money for different causes together. Like it's been so amazing in that sense. So it's, it definitely like, if you're feeling like in your life, like that you are lose, have lost that kind of like contact or that kind of, um, very empowering, um, connection that you need. Cause that we don't often get from our friends and family. You know what I mean? Like it's a different kind of a feeling. Um, this is definitely like something that, you know, people, women would absolutely love to do because, you know, it's really taking into account, you know, everything, everything where you're at so far and where do you want to go with it? Because, you know, your past does not define you and it's not going to stop you right with this group. Mm. Yeah. I love that. And for those of you who don't know, I was actually in the pilot round of this program and I can totally confirm, like I stayed in touch with uh, quite a few of the women in the project and uh, did some collaborations as well. And I just really loved having that community and like the structure to really work through certain things. And um, one thing that I really loved personally was the opportunity to do a lot of lives in the group because that was something I was really struggling with at the time to get over my fear of doing live videos and then I just did them like several times a week so that was really helpful and, and, and to mm. like showing up for yourself like however that looks it increases confidence and it increases increases self-worth right it increases self-acceptance so that's a huge piece of this of this uh, program is getting more confident getting more self-accepting getting more uh, in love with yourself and who you are and the magic that you have right because women again like we do so much when we can really stuff it down and you know there's parts of so many women that will never get to shine, right? Unless they say, okay, I'm going to step up for myself. This is my time. Um, another thing for creative people is that the fears, right? How many fears do creative people have? And we're all dealing with the same fears. So it really puts into perspective, like, okay, I'm definitely not alone in this situation. Right. And it's helpful to move forward in that sense too, because you don't feel alone. Like we said before, like when we were talking about creatives and what kind of issues they have and all that kind of stuff, it's feeling alone, right? Like that's a huge thing that does not allow you to move forward as your best self. Right. So it's not, that's not a self liberating feeling, feeling alone. So Mm -hmm. it's really about bringing all of these women together. And, um, yeah, we've already got a number of women that have signed up for this third round. And, uh, like I said, it starts on October 29th, last day to sign up is October 28th. Um, and I hope that, uh, many more of you, if you're feeling called, definitely join us because it's really life changing. There's so many testimonials on it too. Um, if you go to, um, Anna's special link for this program. So it's 
www.wildandcreative.com slash GPP dash Anna. And that is, that goes straight to Anna's um, special link for this, for this program, but you'll see a ton of testimonials on there. Mm. And I'll definitely include that link uh, in the show notes as well. So yeah, uh, we'll get into that a little more in a moment, but I really wanted to ask you uh, one more thing about this project. Was there anything specific in your own journey that really inspired you to put this together? Um, Because I I can feel there's a lot of passion and uh, like I feel a desire to really bring women together and to create something that is really accessible to a lot of women. Uh, Is there like a specific experience that you had or something uh, that really inspired you to create this? Yeah, it was interesting how this program came to be because it really, honestly, I'm not going to say came out of thin air, but you know, when you are just aligned with something, like it comes together fast, right? You're like, what, where did that come from? But so what happened was that it was last January, actually, I was just kind of thinking about something that like I had always been dealing with my whole life. And that was that I remember feeling this way when I was like eight, nine, 10 years old. And I was like, I'm always second place. Like I'm really good at everything, but I'm not great at anything. Like what the heck? Like, I feel like I'm always second place. And, um, no matter what I do. And I remember telling my mom this in the car and she was like, yeah, okay. Well, that's kind of like, okay. I'm sure you're first at some things. I'm like, no, I always feel second place, but I guess I'm the first daughter. I'm the first born. So, um, you know, I guess I'm first in that sense. And she was like, Oh, maybe, maybe didn't I tell you that I had a baby that passed away a long, long time ago. So you're actually the second born. I was like, of course, of course I am. Thank you <laughs> for confirming that. And, um, so I just remember kind of going through like my teenage years, my twenties and all that kind of stuff being like, I'm always second. Like I'm never going to get first place. I'm never going to get that. Right. So, um, it's kind of a weird feeling to think, although I tried really hard at different things and I'm sure I did succeed like at a lot of things, but that was like my mentality around it. And another thing growing up, I always repelled gold. I was like, nope, I like silver. I don't want gold anything. I don't like it. I think that everybody else wants it. So therefore I want silver. I want to be different. And I really like embodied gold, uh, embodied silver, you know, like I just really attracted it. And so it wasn't until I was like at a healing retreat, like a number of years ago, where I was like, that's weird. Me always feeling like I'm second place and always embodying silver. Like, does that have something to do with each other? Right. Just even in my mentality, my own mentality. And, um, so in January when I was kind of like thinking about all this and like putting it together and I was like, huh, like, I think that that definitely stands for something in my own life. Like what if now I embodied gold? Like what if now I embodied first place? What if I said no to being second place, right? It's not just being second place, like winning the Olympics. It's like being second, it's like being second place. Like, are you putting yourself second in your life? Are you putting everyone else before you? Are you putting um, all of the things that you possibly could do and get done and all of your goals? Is that first place, but you're still feeling second? Like you're never going to get to them if that's what you're embodying. That's what you're living and feeling. So that's how it really started. Like, it's kind of a funny little story like that, that, you know, is only really personal to me. But then I was just like, you know what? there's so many women out there like queens queens want gold they don't want silver why would a queen want silver right like gold is the best that we know of um so it's like but it's really an idea it's the idea of it right it's like as a queen of your own life what do you want to do do you want to settle for silver do you want to settle for gold like where do you want to take your life right so that's how it really started and that's the funny little story behind it but um Yeah, that really started the golden pineapple thing. Cause then I was like in love with pineapples at the time. I'm like golden pineapples. I was like, let's do this. It's kind of quirky. It'll get some attention. And then it was funny because during the first, like first and second round of the program, everyone was like, there's hundreds of people messaging me. I see golden pineapples everywhere. I'm like, well, I mean, it was a decor thing that also like popped up at the time, but it was helpful. It was good marketing. (laughs) Um, But uh, yeah, you know what? I mean, I still definitely like embrace golden stuff now, golden pineapples more than I ever did before. And it's funny because I would not even have any gold like in my decor at home. Like I would just say no, absolutely not to it just wasn't my thing but now there's some gold stuff that have definitely sneaked in and also too it's like why as a person did I repel it so hard you know what I mean like why did I feel I needed to embody silver so much like it's actually just a a strange thing I think about but anyway that's the story so um, I'm really helping people understand their gold so their personal gold and say I'm worth it I'm number one in my own life I'm gonna do this
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I lo really love this story. Such a fun story. Thank you for sharing this. And um, one thing, one last thing I wanted to ask you, uh, we're almost getting to the end of this call, but I wanted to ask you if there's anything, um, like one final message that you wanted to share with our audience. Well, um, something that I truly believe in and... I would love it if the whole world believed in it was that, you know, if everybody in the world was able to express themselves creatively, the world would be a much more harmonious place. So I really feel that through self-expression, people are able to feel heard, seen, felt, um, able to express themselves, able to just get out like what it is that is suffocating them. Right. And so if we look at like a lot of the countries that are in turmoil or people that are really nasty people, I'm probably going to, just assume that they're not really taking time to do poetry, painting, um, you know, even hear their voice out loud or singing or anything like that, right? Like when I know, I, I've had a time in my life um, where I didn't do any creative things, kind of something happened and I just kind of put creativity aside and it was a number of months and I felt so depleted. Like, so I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, it doesn't matter if you didn't come out of the womb, like with a paintbrush like we have to express ourselves in some way and whether that might be cooking for somebody or like the way that they go on walks for another person as long as you like take some kind of creativity like into your life um i think that you're going to be a much more harmonious person you're going to enjoy life more you're going to um understand life more and it also just puts you in connection more with like the universe and like the divine or however you want to look at it. Right. So creativity really like it's our, it's the answer. It's the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally love that. And that's very interesting what you mentioned about feeling depleted when you weren't uh, doing any creative work. Cause that's exactly what happens to me as well. Like um, I've done some work in the Akashic records with a few readers and they pointed out to me that my main energy center is uh, divine creation. So that's maybe a personal thing too, but um, I definitely see that whenever I feel kind of depleted or there's like a feeling that something's missing in my business or whatever it may be, if I just go back into creative mode, whether it's working on my website or just creating a new opt-in, <laughs> anything yeah. like that, or writing a blog post that just puts me back into my flow and then I get the energy and the inspiration. So I love that you share yeah. that. And just have like some little toolbox stuff, right? Like just, you know, even something as simple as coloring for some people or what have you, like even when you're feeling stuck or like, you know, as entrepreneurs too, I find that Mondays, like, although I don't have a traditional Monday, but Mondays, the whole idea of it still sucks for me. I'm like, oh, it's Monday, right? It's like, oh, this whole week ahead. But the thing is, um, you know, like I have little things that I do, right? Like I like listening to jazz or classical. That definitely like helps me feel better. Um, I'll just color a few pages of a coloring book first thing in the morning, right? I'm like, okay, now I'm feeling creative again, right? Like just really simple, silly little things that you can do for yourself. Um, they just kind of jumpstart it again for you. It's just good to have like that list of things that you do that, that are good for you to jumpstart, right? Mm, yeah. Awesome. All right. I've got one last little question for you. Where can we find you? Um, I'll definitely include the link to the golden pineapple project in the show notes, but, um, what other places are, uh, sure. good ways to get in touch with you? So my website basically has everything on it. So wild and Andy wild and creative.com. Uh, go on there. You'll have the link to my podcast. You'll have a link to my personal group um, on Facebook, which is just a really creative kind of natural nature inspired group. Um, you'll have information to any free gifts I can give you. Uh, you'll have information for all of my programs that I'm offering at all, at all times. Um, there's programs that are hosted uh, happening, like the Golden Pineapple right now. Um, I did one uh, last month, or sorry, September, in um, that was all about creating your signature course, soulfully creating a signature course. But I have a number of programs on there too that are, you know, evergreen that you can get into at any time. So I have a lot of content. Um, I've really been trying to scale things down. I have taken some of my uh, great content that, you know, I felt was 
just a little bit too much and I've put thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into my membership site. So my membership site is called Wild and Creative Soul Circle. Um, you can get access that through my website too. And uh, it is a great platform, like especially for somebody that's not ready for mentorship or can't afford it, what have you. It has so much beneficial content on there for you to really start moving forward. Um, and then you know what? You might find that you get a lot of successes from that stuff and then you might want to grab a mentor after that kind of thing, right? So it's just a great starting point. Um, although like I said, I do put in a couple thousand dollars of content every single month, um, broken up into tiny little mini courses and great, um, magical chats and all that kind of stuff. Right. So again, that's a great um, resource. Mm, awesome. Yeah. I'll definitely include some of those links and the uh, blog posts too, that will, um, contain all the contents of this podcast and, yeah, I think that's it for today. So thank you so much, Sarah, for being here with me today. I really enjoyed our conversation and you shared a lot of really amazing tips with us. So I really loved that and I appreciate you for being here. And I also wanted to say thank you to everybody who's listening or watching this uh, wherever you may be tuning in. And I look forward to being back with my next episode very soon.